Hello and welcome to this exciting new series designed specifically for the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam. I'm thrilled to have you on this journey. This certification is your entry gateway into the world of AWS Cloud, whether you are just starting out or looking to solidify your foundational knowledge, this series is here to guide you every step of the way. We will cover a comprehensive range of exam style questions and provide invaluable tips and tricks to help you ace the exam on your first attempt. Make sure to explore the entire playlist to get the maximum out of our content. Have your note-taking tools ready because we will also teach you strategies to eliminate incorrect choices efficiently. And if you are joining us at the last minute and need access to the full set of questions in the PDF format, consider becoming a gold member of the channel. Just email me at devopsup2023 at gmail.com to request your copy after joining the channel. So without wasting much time, let's get into the questions. A company is migrating to the AWS cloud instead of running its infrastructure on-premise. Which of the following are advantages of this migration? Choose two options. First one, elimination of the need to perform security auditing. Option B, increased global reach and agility. Option C, ability to deploy globally in minutes. Option D, elimination of the cost of IT staff members. Option E, redundancy by default for all compute services. So the right answer is option B and option C. Increased global reach and agility and ability to deploy globally in minutes. So in the below section, I have a link where you can go and read about six advantages of migrating to cloud computing. They are namely, you trade fixed expense for variable expense, benefit from massive economies of scale, stop guessing capacity, increased speed and agility, stop spending money running and maintaining data centers, and you have the ability to glo go global in minutes. Moving on to next question. A company needs significant cost savings for their non-interruptible workloads on AWS. Which EC2 instance pricing model should the company select? The options are dedicated hosts, reserved instances, spot instances, on-demand instances. So the right answer is option B. Amazon EC2 reserved instances provide a significant discount up to 72% compared to on-demand pricing and provide a capacity reservation when used in a specific availability zone. The reserved instances provide a discounted hourly rate and an optional capacity reservation for EC2 instances. AWS billing automatically applies your reserved instance discounted rate when attributes of EC2 instance users match attributes of an active reserved instance. If an availability zone is specified, EC2 reserves capacity matching the attributes of the reserved instance. Moving on to next question. Which component of the AWS global infrastructure is made of one or more discrete data centers that have redundant power networking, and connectivity. The options are AWS region, availability zone, edge location, AWS outposts. So the right answer is option D. An availability zone is one or more discrete data centers with redundant power, networking, and connectivity in an AWS region. All AZs in an AWS region are interconnected with high bandwidth, low latency networking, over fully redundant, dedicated metro fiber, providing high throughput, low latency networking between AZs. All traffic between AZs is encrypted. AZs are physically separated by a meaningful distance, many kilometers from any other AZ, although all are within 100 kilometers of each other. 
moving on to the next question what is the most cost effective amazon s3 storage tier for data that is not often accessed but requires high availability so the options are amazon s3 standard amazon glacier amazon s3 one zone ia amazon s3 standard ia before we go to the answers let's see some of the keywords that are there in this question so the first keyword is they are looking for a storage tier which belongs to s3 and they are looking for high availability and it says we need a most cost effective option and the data is not accessed frequently now we will go with a the theory of elimination here we will eliminate the wrong answers first so the first one is s3 standard even though s3 standard provides you high availability but it is more costlier if we compare it with amazon s3 one zone ia ia stands for infrequent access now if so a is not the right answer now if we compare option c and option d both are the infrequent access categories but one of them is one zone and the other one is a standard and here the requirement is to have high availability so we will automatically reject option c because it doesn't offer high availability being one zone so now the option is between amazon glacier and amazon s3 standard infrequent access since the question says the doc, the data is not often accessed but still it is accessed whereas amazon glacier is used for data for archival purposes which is very less accessed so the right answer is option d amazon s3 standard infrequent access so going with the definition s3 standard infrequent access is for data that is accessed less frequently but requires rapid access when needed this is the key point if you go with amazon glacier you don't get rapid access moving on to next question a company wants to migrate a critical application to aws the application has a short run time the application is invoked by changes in data or by shift in system state the company needs a compute solution that maximizes operational efficiency and minimizes the cost of running the application which aws solution should the company use to meet these requirements amazon ec2 spot instances amazon ec2 reserved instances aws lambda and amazon ec2 on demand instances so the right answer is aws lambda now the keyword here is the company needs a compute solution that maximizes operational efficiency and minimizes the cost of running the application so in this case you need to look for any option which is serverless and out of the four option the only serverless option is aws lambda which is an event driven compute service that lets you run your code for virtually any type of application and you can trigger lambda from over 200 aws services moving on to next question which aws service or feature can a company use to determine which business unit is using specific aws resources the options are amazon inspector cost allocation tags key pairs aws trusted advisor so the right answer is cost allocation tags you can use tags to organize your resources and also to track your aws cost on a detailed level 
after you activate cost allocation tags aws uses these tags to organize your resource cost on your cost allocation report to make it easier for you to categorize and track your aws costs moving on to next question which of the following task requires using aws account root credentials the options are a changing the aws support plan b starting and stopping amazon ec2 instances c opening an aws support case d viewing billing information so the right answer is option a changing the aws support plan you do not require root user credentials to perform your day to day activities in aws but there are certain tasks for which you require an aws root credentials some of the tasks that require aws root credentials are closing your aws account activate iam access to the billing and cost management console changing your account settings register as a seller in the reserved instance marketplace and so on for more details you can refer to the link which i have in the details section moving on to the next question the ability to horizontally scale amazon ec2 instances based on demand is an example of which concept the options are economy of scale high availability disaster recovery or elasticity the right answer is option d elasticity elasticity is the ability to acquire resources as you need them and release resources when you no longer need them moving on to the question number 9 which statement is correct in relation to the aws shared responsibility model the options are aws is responsible for encrypting customer data option b aws is responsible for the security of regions and availability zones option c customers are responsible for the security of the cloud option d customers are responsible for patching and fixing flaws within the infrastructure so the right answer is option b aws is responsible for the security of regions and availability zone aws follows a concept of shared responsibility where customer is responsible for security in the cloud whereas aws is responsible for security of the cloud so you can refer to the diagram in my presentation for more details around what falls in security in the cloud option and what falls in the security of the cloud options moving on to the next question which of the following are architectural best practices for aws cloud you need to choose two options option 1 deploy into a single availability zone option 2 deploy into a multiple availability zone option 3 design for fault tolerance option d close coupling option e create monolithic architectures so the right options are option b and option c basically there are six pillars of the aws well architecture framework namely operational excellence security reliability performance efficiency cost optimization and sustainability moving on to next question an organization has an on premise environment which they want to connect to their aws environment how can they achieve this hybrid cloud configuration which avoids using internet the options are aws managed vpn 
AWS Direct Connect, AWS VPC Endpoint, AWS Site to Site VPN. The keyword here is they want to establish a connectivity between the on premise environment and AWS, but they do not want to have that connectivity over internet. They are looking for something like a private connection. So the right answer is option B, AWS Direct Connect. AWS Direct Connect is a network service that provides an alternative to using the internet to utilize AWS cloud services. AWS Direct Connect enables customers to have low latency, secure and private connection to AWS for workloads which require require higher speed or lower latency than the internet. Moving on to next question. A company wants is its workloads to be resilient, perform correctly, consistently, and recover from errors in a timely manner as part of its cloud architecture. Which pillar of the AWS well-architected framework are these requirements related to? The options are A, security, B, operational excellence, C, performance efficiency, D, reliability. So the right answer is option D. The reliability pillar encompasses the ability of a workload to perform its intended function correctly and consistently when it's expected to. There are five design principles for reliability in cloud. Automatically recover from failure, test recovery procedures, scale horizontally to increase aggregate workload availability, stop guessing capacity, manage change in automation. Next question, a company needs to simultaneously process hundreds of requests from different users. Which combination of AWS services should the company use to build an operationally efficient solution? The options are AWS Amplify and AWS AppSync, AWS Data Pipeline and Amazon EC2, Amazon SQS and AWS Lambda, Amazon Kinesis and Amazon Athena. So the right answer is option C, Amazon SQS and AWS Lambda. Moving on to question 14. What is the scope of a VPC within the AWS network? The options are a, VPC can span all availability zones within an AWS region. Option B, VPC can span all availability zones globally. Option C, VPC must span at least two subnets in each AWS region. Option D, VPC must span at least two edge locations in each AWS region. So the right answer is, Option A, Amazon VPC lets you provision a logical isolated section of the Amazon Web Services where you can launch AWS resources in a virtual network that you define. You have complete control over your virtual networking environment, including selection of your own IP address ranges, creation of subnets, and configuration of route tables and network gateways. You can also create a hardware virtual private network connection between your corporate data center and your VPC and leverage the AWS cloud as an extension of your corporate data center. You can refer to the FAQs link that I have in my video here. You will definitely have some questions on VPC in your exam. So it's highly recommended you go through the FAQs. Moving on to next question. What responsibility does a customer have when using Amazon RDS to host a database according to AWS shared responsibility model? 
the options are install Microsoft SQL Server, design encryption at rest strategies, manage connections to the database, apply minor database patches. So the right answer is option C. <clears throat> Moving on to the next question. What is the benefit of using fully managed services in AWS compared to deploying third-party software on EC2? The options are you don't need to back up your data, you have greater control and flexibility, improved security, reduced operational overhead. So the right answer is option D. Fully managed services reduce your operational overhead as AWS manage not just the infrastructure layer, but the service layer above it as well. One of the examples is Amazon Aurora database. Moving on to the question number 17. Which AWS services are delivered globally and not regionally? You need to choose two. The options are Amazon Route 53, Amazon CloudFront, Amazon VPC, Amazon EC2, Amazon RDS. So the right answers are option A and B. Amazon services process and store customer content in the AWS region where the services are used by the customer, except as otherwise specified. Global services, AWS IAM, Identity and Access Management, AWS Organizations, Amazon CloudFront, Amazon Route 53, AWS Global Accelerator, AWS Direct Connect, AWS Firewall Manager, AWS WAF, and AWS Shield may store and process data globally. Moving on to question 18, which AWS service is used to enable multi-factor authentication? The options are AWS IAM, Amazon EC2, AWS IAM, and AWS KMS. So the right answer is AWS IAM. AWS multi-factor authentication is an AWS identity and access management best practice that requires a second authentication factor in addition to username and password, sign-in credentials. You can enable MFA at the AWS account level and for root and IAM users you have created in your account. Moving on to question 19. What is the most secure method when storing passwords on AWS? Your options are store passwords as AWS cloud formation parameters, store passwords in AWS Secrets Manager, store passwords in an Amazon S3 bucket, store passwords in AWS KMS. The right answer is option B. AWS Secret Manager helps you manage, retrieve, and rotate database credentials, API keys, and other secrets throughout their life cycle. You can refer to this link if you need want to learn more about Secrets Manager. Note, AWS KMS Management lets you create, manage, and control cryptographic keys and not the user credentials. Moving on to next question. An organization is migrating its application from on-premise SQL Server to AWS. As part of the migration, the company wants to reduce operational overhead, but does not want to refactor the application. 
which database service would most effectively support these requirements? The options are A, Amazon Redshift, B, Microsoft SQL Server on Amazon EC2, C, Amazon DynamoDB, B, Amazon RDS for SQL Server. So the right answer is option B. Amazon RDS for SQL Server is a managed service that is designed for developers who require the features and capabilities of SQL Server for building a new application. You can also move existing applications that utilize SQL Server to Amazon RDS without having to rewrite the application completely. Which of the following are the responsibilities of a company that is using AWS Lambda? Choose two options. The options are selection of CPU resources, patching of operating system, security of their code, security of underlying infrastructure, writing and updating of their code. So the right options are option C and option E security of their code and writing and updating of their code. When customers use AWS Lambda, AWS manages the underlying infrastructure and foundational services, the operating system and the application platform. Customers themselves are responsible for the security of their code, the storage and accessibility of the sensitive data and the identity and access management to the Lambda service and within their function. Moving on to next question. Which of the following are the components of AWS site-to-site -site VPN connection? Choose two options. The options are virtual private gateway, AWS storage gateway, internet gateway, customer gateway, and NAT gateway. The right answers are Option A and option D. A site-to-site -site VPN connection offers two VPN tunnels between a virtual private gateway or a transit gateway on the AWS side and a customer gateway, which represents a VPN device on the remote on-premise side. You can refer to the link on your screen to understand AWS site-to-site -site VPN connection. This link can also be found in the description section of this video. Moving on to next question. Which storage type can be mounted using the NFS protocol to many EC2 instances simultaneously? The options are Amazon EBS, Amazon Instance Store, Amazon EFS, Amazon S3. So the right answer is option C, Amazon EFS. EFS is a file storage service for use with Amazon Compute, EC2, containers, and serverless. And on-premise servers, EFS provides the file system interface, file system access semantics, such as strong consistency and file logging, and concurrently accessible storage for up to thousands of EC2 instances. EFS uses the Network File System version 4, NFS version 4 protocol. Moving on to next question, question number 24. Which AWS service or feature acts as a firewall for Amazon EC2 instances? The options are Security Group, Network ACL, Amazon VPC, and Elastic Network Interface. So the right answer is option A. A security group acts as a virtual firewall for your EC2 instances to control incoming and outgoing traffic. Inbound rules control the incoming traffic to your instance and outbound rules control the outgoing traffic from your instance. 
Moving on to next question. A system engineer discovers that Amazon EC2 instances have been terminated. Which AWS service should the system engineer use to identify the user or API call that terminated these instances? Your options are A, Amazon Inspector, B, AWS Trusted Advisor, C, AWS Cloud Trail, D, AWS Artifact. So the right answer is option C. AWS CloudTrail is an AWS service that helps you enable operational and risk auditing governance and compliance of your AWS account. Actions taken by a user role or an AWS service are recorded as events in CloudTrail. Moving on to next question. Which AWS service will help protect applications running on AWS against DDoS attacks? Your options are Amazon Inspector, AWS Shield, AWS WAF, and Amazon Guard Duty. <clears throat> so the right answer is option B, AWS Shield. AWS Shield is a managed DDoS protection service that safeguards applications running on AWS. It provides dynamic detection and automatic inline mitigations that minimize application downtime and latency. So there is no need to engage AWS service support to benefit from DDoS protection. There are two tiers of AWS Shield, standard and advanced. Moving on to question number 27. Company has a single Amazon EC2 instance. The company wants to adopt a highly available architecture. What can the company do to meet these requirements? Your options are option A, purchase an EC2 dedicated instance. Option B, change the EC2 instance family to a compute optimized instance. Option C, scale horizontally across multiple availability zones. Option D, scale vertically to a large EC2 instance size. So the right answer is option C. Horizontal scaling, commonly referred to as a scale out, is the capability to automatically add systems or instances in a distributed manner in order to handle an increase in load. Examples of this increase in load could be the increase of number of sessions to a web application. With horizontal scaling, the load is distributed across multiple instances. By distributing these instances across availability zones, horizontal scaling not only increases performance, but also provides and improves the overall reliability of the application. Moving on to next question. AWS has the ability to achieve lower pay as you go pricing by aggregating usage across hundreds of thousands of users. This describes which advantage of the AWS cloud. <laughs> Your options are option A, no guessing about compute capacity, option B, massive economies of scale, option C, increased speed and agility, option D, go global in minutes. So the right answer is option B. By using cloud computing, you can achieve a lower variable cost than you can get on your own. Because usage from thousands of customers is aggregated in the cloud, providers such as AWS can achieve higher economies of scale, which translates into lower pay-as-you-go prices. Moving on to next question. A 
company's on premise application deployment cycle was 3 to 4 weeks the company can deploy the application in 2 to 3 days after migrating to aws cloud which benefit has the company leveraged by moving to aws cloud your options are option a agility option b resilience option c elasticity option d flexibility so the right answer is option a agility moving on to question number 30 which aws service can be used to track configuration history of your aws resources your options are a aws service catalog b amazon guard duty c aws artifact d aws config so the right answer is option d aws config records details of changes to your aws resources to provide you with a configuration history you can use the aws management console api or cli to obtain details of what a resource configuration looked like at any point in the past moving on to next question which of the following security related activities are the responsibility of aws customers choose two options your options are securely dispose faulty disk drives installing patches on the network infrastructure implementing iam user password policies installing patches on the guest operating system implementing data center access controls <clears throat> so the right options are option c and option d implementing iam user password policies and installing patches on the guest operating system you need to remember that customer is responsible for the security in the cloud and aws is responsible for security of the cloud you will most likely get a question around this in your exam moving on to question number 32 which of the following is one of the major benefits of using elastic compute over your traditional on premise physical servers your options are you can choose the hardware vendor you get root access to the server you only pay for what you use you have the ability of automated backups so the right answer is option c you only pay for what you use the traditional on premise approach prioritizes capital expenditure also called as capex whereas cloud economies favor operational expenditure also called as opex moving on to next question your web application is currently hosted in the us west region in aws you need to ensure users all across the world get a seamless user experience when accessing the application which of the following service can help achieve this your options are aws cloud trail aws route 53 AWS Elastic Load Balancer and AWS CloudFront. So the right answer is option D, AWS CloudFront. Amazon CloudFront is a content delivery network service built for high performance, security, and developer convenience to deliver content to end users with low latency. Amazon CloudFront uses a global network of 450 plus points of presence and 13 regional edge caches in 90 plus cities across 48 countries currently. If you would like to read more about AWS CloudFront, please go to this link which is also mentioned in the description section of this video for your reference. Moving on to question 34. 
which of the following are features of network acl in aws cloud you need to choose two answers your options are they operate at the instance level they evaluate all rules before allowing traffic they are stateless they process rules in order starting with lowest numbered rule when deciding whether to allow traffic they are stateful so the right answers are option c and option d network acls are stateless which means that responses to allowed inbound traffic are subject to the rules for outbound traffic and vice versa rules are evaluated starting with the lowest number rule as soon as a rule matches traffic it's applied regardless of any higher numbered rule that might contradict it a network acl has inbound rules and outbound rule each rule can either allow or deny traffic moving on to next question a company wants to run production workloads on aws the company needs concierge service a designated aws tam and technical support that is available 24 hours a day and 7 days a week which support plan will meet these requirements your options are basic support developer support business support and enterprise support so the right answer is option d enterprise support aws enterprise support provides you with concierge like service where the main focus is helping you achieve your outcomes and find success in the cloud with enterprise support you get 24 cross 7 technical support from highly quality engineers tools and technology to automatically manage health of your environment consultative architectural guidance delivered in the context of your application and use cases and a designated technical account manager tam to coordinate access to proactive and preventive programs and aws subject matter experts you will definitely get some questions on the types of support in aws so please go through this link in my description section of this video to understand it in a better way moving on to question number 36 a company is planning to store their archives in aws which of the following storage mechanism provided by aws would provide an ideal and cost effective storage option for storing the archive data your options are amazon s3 glacier amazon s3 standard amazon ebs snapshots amazon ebs volumes so the right answer is option a amazon s3 glacier amazon s3 glacier storage classes are purpose built for data archiving providing you with high performance most retrieval flexibility and the lowest cost archive storage in the cloud all s3 glacier storage classes provide virtually unlimited scalability and are designed for 99.119 of data durability whenever there is a mention of archive storage in aws then you should start thinking about s3 glacier you can also get some questions where you might have to choose between different classes of s3 glacier storage so i would highly recommend to go through the different amazon s3 glacier storage classes moving on to question 37 our company wants to have access to scalable highly reliable and fully managed file storage that runs on the server message block protocol which aws service will meet these requirements your options are option a amazon s3 option b amazon efs option c amazon ebs option d amazon fsx for windows file server
So the right answer is option D, Amazon FSx for Windows File Server. It makes it easy for you to launch and scale reliable, performant, and secure shared file storage for your applications and end users. With Amazon FSx, you can launch highly durable and available file systems that can span multiple availability zones and can be accessed from up to thousands of compute instances using the industry standard server message block protocol, which is also called as SMB protocol. Moving on to question 38. A company wants to improve the overall availability and performance of its application that are hosted on AWS. Which AWS service should the company use? Your options are option A, Amazon Connect, option B, AWS Global Accelerator, option C, Amazon LightSail, option D, AWS Storage Gateway. So the right answer is option B, AWS Global Accelerator. It is a network service that helps you improve the availability performance and security of your public applications. Global Accelerator provides two global static public IPs that act as a fixed entry point to your application endpoints, such as application load balancers, NLBs, Amazon EC2 instances, and Elastic IPs. Moving on to next question. You have been running an on-demand EC2 Linux instance for eight hours, nine minutes, and 17 seconds. How much time will you be billed for? Your options are option A, nine hours, option B, eight hours, option C, eight hours and 10 minutes, option D, eight hours, nine minutes, and 17 seconds. So the right answer is option D, eight hours, nine minutes, and 17 seconds. EC2 usage is built in one second increments with a minimum of 16, 60 seconds. Per second billing is available for instances launched in on-demand, savings plan, reserve, and spot instances. All regions and availability zones and the instance type can be Amazon Linux, Windows, and Ubuntu. So if this question was twisted a bit and it said the instance was running for 59 seconds, then you would have been billed for 60 seconds because the minimum is 60 seconds. But if you go above 60 seconds, then it's on one second increments. So the right answer is eight hours, nine minutes and 17 seconds. Moving on to next question. A company has many multiple business units using the same AWS service to manage their different applications. Which AWS service or tool can the company use to receive volume discounts across multiple AWS accounts? Your options are option A, AWS budgets, option B, cost explorer, option C, AWS organizations, option D, AWS cost and usage report. So the right answer is option C, AWS organizations. You can use the consolidated billing feature in AWS organizations to consolidate billing and payment for multiple AWS accounts. You can combine the usage across all accounts in the organization to share the volume pricing discounts, reserve instance discounts, and savings plans. This can result in a lower charge for your project, department, or company than the individual storage accounts. Friends, make sure to stick around till the end of each video for key insights and practical takeaways. If you find our content helpful, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more exam-focused content. Do not forget to turn on the notifications so you never miss an update from us.